Herzog's Y is a real-time strategy game that was made by Technosoft and was developed for the Sega Genesis. It's kind of a weird hybrid of a real-time strategy game with what's basically Thunder Force 2. The game looks really good, and I wish I could say the same for the gameplay. It probably would have helped if I had a manual, but, you know, I didn't, and so if if you don't have one, you're gonna have to look up all the controls online. That way you have an idea of, well, what all the commands and symbols actually mean for all of your different units. So there are a bunch of maps that you can choose from right off the bat in this game, which kind of feels a little bit weird. It sort of makes it a little odd just because there's no real story in this as far as I can tell. Maybe it's in the manual or something like that, but I, I just I just don't really know. It feels like Red Robot is angry at Blue Robot, so they start fighting each other in an endless war of absolute nonsense in a planet that's just the leftovers of every place that no one will ever want to live. Uh, so the game, it really reminds me of Total Annihilation and the way it's set up. Because you have your general unit, and he is basically issuing commands to all of his little troops in the field, and you kind of just wheel around with your general and, and do different stuff. What's nice about this is there are no buildings that you have to build. You just have to make your units, send them out to capture like, some of the smaller bases, and that's really about it. You just have to try to get as many of the smaller bases to increase your income so that you can take out the blue army. Or if you're playing in the two-player mode, take out the red army. It's, it's really that simple in the way it's done. The major problem with it is uh, I just really hated the controls for it. It, it was just absolutely insane. Uh, now your general operates both as a unit, unit and as um, the way that you deploy your soldiers in the field. Again, similar to how Total Annihilation works, where your general, or if you have another construction unit, they basically build the different, you, the different buildings for you. In this one, you need to have your general to lead the soldiers into the field, and he has to issue them commands. This is where the game like really sort of falls apart a little bit for me, and that's because you can't, like, change the commands that you're issuing to these people. They're only given one command, and they go off and do that one thing. And it's just very weird for me <laughs> that that happens, because what if I made a mistake and I want to change it? Do I just... I guess I just say screw it and try to, you know, do what I can with something else. Uh... Now eventually, I did figure this whole thing out. It was just really, really weird the way it was done. Um, I had to look it up online to figure all this stuff out, just because I was absolutely lost and just had no idea what the hell I was doing. But eventually, you know, you, you figure it out, do the best you can, and if you're like me, you just keep dying over and over again. One cool thing that I didn't mention was the different uh, ways that these maps are set up. I only played about five or six of them, but it's kind of cool how they do the different like layers in the map or different levels in it. So you have units who are just the dumbest freaking things in the entire world. They'll actually fall into like some of the caverns that are there, and they're just stuck. And you have to fly your ship in, pick them up, and set them back on the you know back on the regular level. Uh, it's, yeah, it's like playing a game of lemmings, but with stuff that's going to shoot at you over and over again. It's kind of weird, uh, but, you know, you'll eventually figure it out if you keep playing. Now, I don't know what the review scores for this game were at the time. I 
I, I just don't really know. <laughs> if I had to go back and review it, I probably would have given it points just for being a unique title on the Genesis. But just the overall gameplay, I, I did not really like it that much. And that's mostly because I think I was trying to do a lot of exploratory stuff with it, just trying to figure out exactly what I needed to do. And near the end, I kind of figured it out. So you see how like some of these smaller bases, you have to get four infantry men into it. And then they take over the smaller bases. That allows you to basically recharge your general, move further up the map. And it, it's just the only way that you can do it. My major problem with it was is it's just like there's no tutorial like there was in Dune. There was no real like explanation as to what you're doing and you're just kind of left on your own to figure this whole thing out. Now sometimes that's pretty good. Sometimes that works out just great. But with a game like this, I was just so confused as to what I was supposed to be doing. And you know, I, I eventually got it. The units most of the time tell you what they do, and yeah, other times you kind of have to guess if you don't really see it right away. Like the, the motorcycles and like the heavy cars, or the armored cars I think they're called. I don't know why they're in the game. They don't need to be there. They don't really do anything. They don't, like, they don't really serve a purpose for me. The tanks and the infantry and the Gatling guns, they definitely do, as well as the SAM sites, because they're able to you know, take out your general when he's flying around in his little jet. But for the most part, some of these could probably just be omitted. Or maybe they could have made it so that the uh, motorcycles could also take over like minor bases. That kind of would have been cool, but unfortunately they didn't go that way. Find the manual for this game if you want to play it, or look up the walkthrough online so that you kind of have an idea of what the controls are. Otherwise, you're just going to be guessing a lot, and it's really going to affect pretty much your entire experience with this game. It's really cool that Technosoft and Sega tried to do something like this like fairly early on. The game was put out in about 1990. It's it's pretty rough though, and this formula would be done a lot better later on. Anyway guys, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you all enjoyed it, and if you liked what you saw, let me know in the comments below. If you hated it, definitely let me know, because that's the only way I'm going to get better at these. Anyway, have a great night, everybody.